damn. I was hoping you'd show up. Had my fingers crossed. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is the weekend of October 11th. Now, if you watch my show through the week, you know what I like to do. I like to share hot penny stocks with you that I found through the trading day. I trade stocks under five bucks every day from bell to bell. And you can find these stocks on every single market. There is no shortage of penny stocks. But on the weekends, I've been doing something different. I've been sharing some of my own personal trading insights. Now, I call them my own personal trading insights because what I share with you, I can't find any information on out there online. I'm not saying I'm inventing this stuff, but folks, I look at over 10,000 charts a month. No, I am not exaggerating. I'm probably lowballing it. I look at 500 to 1,000 charts every single day easily. First off, I'm hunting for a hot stock to share with you at the end of the day. I go through a lot of charts doing that. And then every day from 9.30 to 4 o'clock, I'm over at Penny Boys trading with anybody and everybody who shows up. They bring in charts. I find charts. We are looking at charts all day long. And when you look at that many charts, things start to jump out at you. And the things that have been jumping out at me, I can't find any information online about. So I figured I'd be the one to share it with you. And over the last few weeks, I've shown you how to find hot bullish patterns on a chart, how to make the most from your trades, how to protect yourself so you don't lose too much money on any one trade. And today, I want to share with you two of my favorite hot bar plays. These plays tell you when the stock is about ready to run. We have two of them. One I call the pillar. When you see a pillar, and I'll get into this deeper, as soon as you see a pillar, you normally see a run right after it. The other one I call DIS, Directional Intentional Spike. When you see this set up, it means you need to pay attention right now. It could break out anytime in the next five minutes to five days, honestly. And I'll explain why that is when we get to it. Now, the first thing we got to do is talk about the difference between Heikenashi bars and candles which is why I've got two charts opened up here so that you can see the differences. My hot bar plays are based on Heiken Ashi bars, which is what I've been trading with for over two years now for a lot of reasons. These charts are exactly the same. This is ticker DFLI, five minute charts, but they don't look the same, do they? Exact same information being portrayed differently on each chart. On the left-hand side, you've got your Heiken Ashi bars solid bars, no gaps, no dead space. You have red bars when she's falling, green bars when she's climbing. Very defined, very crisp and clear. On your, your candles, you end up with gaps. If the price jumps from 30 cents to 40 cents and there's nobody there to buy or sell in between, you won't get a bar. You get a little tag down here and a tag up there. And when you scan charts like I do, looking for hot charts, it's tough to see bullish patterns. You, you just don't have all the lines finished. This is like a dot to dot that hasn't been finished. It's even hard for me to find my supports and resistances on a lot of these charts. I want it to be clear and quick and easy for me. I want to glance at the chart and I want to see my bullish or bearish pattern. I want to see my supports and resistances quick and easy because before I get into a trade, I find a stock I want to get into. I go look at the chart. First thing I do is to put up supports and resistances, these horizontal lines on the board. And if I can't get them, if I can't find them fast enough, I may miss my trade. Now, why do I need these supports and resistances in a hurry? Because they tell me the price I'm going to get in at. They tell me what price I sell at when things are going good. And they tell me what price to sell at when things are going bad. I can't get any of that information without supports and resistances. Now, if most of that just confused you, you didn't understand why you would need supports and resistances, don't you worry. I've got a video I put out hmm, about two months ago called Supports and Resistances. Run on over to my YouTube site and just put in the word supports in the search bar and you'll find it. The uh, other thing that's very unique about Heiken Ashi bars Every single bar opens up in the center of the bar before it. <laughs> I know that sounds strange, but without exception, 100% of the time, 
every single bar opens up in the middle of the bar before it. So what you end up with are charts that look very crisp, clean, defined, easy to look at and see what you want to see in a heartbeat. And that's really why I like my Heiken Oshis. Now, the main reason I am showing you the difference between the two is because my hot bar plays are based on Heiken Ashi bars and only about 50% of the time do they work on regular candles. So I just want you to see that so that you know the difference. Maybe you'll want to use Heiken Ashis too. Who knows? So let's take a look at my first example. We're looking at ticker RDAR. We got to start off on the four hour charts on all of these because that's where I got my notes. So we found these two bars, got two arrows on the one hour chart. As you can see on the four hour chart, she's in the middle of a breakout here. She came through that 200 and she is surging hard and fast. Now remember, we can't see any of the rest of this after the arrows. So I didn't know she was going to keep going. Because you look at this and you go, do we really need two hot bars in the middle of that surge? Duh, it's already running. <laughs> yes, we do. We always want confirmation that the stock is about ready to give us more money. Absolutely. So this is for the one hour. Let's bring both these charts down to the one hour view. Now, the nice thing about these, these are the pillars, folks. Pillars are what I call them because a pillar is part of a foundation and a foundation is what you need whenever you build something up high. Think of a house. You put in a foundation. It's not too deep, but it locks the house down. It's not going to sink into the ground. It's not going to go off kilter. It's not going to be blown away by the wind. It is locked down. Now think of a high rise tower, a skyscraper. Folks, that needs a lot of depth in its foundation. It needs to be super deep because the higher it goes, the more leverage it has. And if this ever leaned for whatever reason, it could easily just pop the foundation right out of the ground and the entire building would just fall over. So that's what we're looking at here. We are looking at a foundation, a pillar, deep, deep, deep to hold up the price as it starts climbing up up, up. And this happens pretty much immediately. And the great thing about these particular bars, they'll show up anywhere, anytime. As long as your MAs are underneath, you can get these things flying. So we've got two of them on this board right here in this period. We're going to look at this one here. Now, this main bar, just kind of think of as the building. You don't want your building going under the ground. You want it to stay on top of the surface. So you don't want this to go any further down than just above the next MA. Now up here above this MA is great. And our spike went down deep, 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 and even deeper. It went through three MAs, 9, 20, and 50, and even continued pushing. And she jumped from there, jumping from 0004 down to 0003, came back up to 0004 and bounced up to 0005. Now that don't sound like much, but that's a 25% gain right then and there, folks. Now where would I have gotten in on this? After that spike came back up, after I saw it and it was laying there on my charts, I see three MAs broke through right here. I'm getting in right there and I'm going to ride this up and I'm getting out right there at 25% gains. I take what is given. I don't sit around waiting for more. I just take what is given. Now, I see this is running on the nine day. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should watch this stock, see where she's going. All of a sudden, you get another one. Here's another pillar building on top of her MA at home, above ground. And our spike goes deep down through the 20, through all this dead space to the 50, and way down deep, even deeper than our first one here. And what did this basically do for us? Well, it gave us a run. She was already running, started picking up speed here and really got strong there. So what happened is she basically went from 0004 up to 0008. That is a 100% run right there before she came back down to the 50. That's what we're looking for. Now, let me come back in on these bars so that you can see what they look like compared to the bars on the candles. I'm getting there, folks. Give me a break. All right, this way. So these bars right here 
are the same candles as these, but they don't look anything the same. Look at that big building. It is sitting on top of our MA above ground, staying at home, and we have our wick going through our two MAs. It is a righteous signal, but it doesn't look like this one. Doesn't have to look like it, but it does look different. The other one looks even more different. We have wick to the top, wick to the bottom, and it's a green bar. We have no wick to the top here, and it's a red bar, but it is a righteous signal. Our bar is sitting above the nine day, didn't leave home, and our wick went through all three MAs, the nine, the 20, and the 50. Beautiful. So we could recognize this on the candles as well as the Heikinashis. Let's take a look at another example. This is mints, ticker M-N-T-S. I want you to remember this for tomorrow, folks. Let me show you what's going on here. We've got an example clear back here in April, but we've got a breakout set up right now. On our four hour chart, you can see she had a wild breakout here from 40 cents up to, wow, a dollar 10. That's like 130% gains. But on the original breakout, you normally don't just keep going. You normally come all the way back down to the 200 and reposition yourself for the second takeoff. She came all the way down, bounced off the 20. And where is she sitting now? Right on top of that 200, looking like she's ready to go. All of our MAs are climbing. But our short chart confirms the fact. Look at this. She was in a downtrend. Our 200-day MA is now climbing up. We have bounced off of the 200 MA and are breaking through the 200 hall right now. So these look good to me for tomorrow, folks. You may want to consider looking at mints early tomorrow. I'm sure we're going to be playing, uh, playing it in Penny Boys tomorrow. So coming back, I have to go to my four hour chart to see this. Let's zoom in right on that area. As you can see, we do have a downtrend going on right now, right? She's coming down real hard. This is a DIS, a directional intentional spike. This is when she bounces off of her floor, whatever her floor is. It could be all the way down here at the 200. It could be on the 50, wherever her floor is. She will push off of that floor all the way up to and through the 200 day MA. That's the head side of the coin. There are two bars that are involved with this play. The second bar, all, we're, all we are looking for is that the bottom of it does not come any lower than the bottom of this full bar. That's it. I don't care if it's red. I don't care if it's green. I don't care what goes on in the top. Just don't let the bottom of this come any lower than the bottom of that, and we are looking good. So we've got a downtrend here. This is a signal telling me it's going to break out. This is an atypical breakout. 200 day MA is falling down fast and furious. We've got our price up underneath it. 200 starts to level out. You get your breakout, but you get a strong breakout when your 200 haul is underneath. This is the 200 sandwich. Your price is in between both 200s getting squeezed together as the lines close in on each other. And once that 200 MA goes flat, pops up on the top and it takes off. And normally that is where I will get in just over top of the 200 because anywhere underneath it is still a resistance. She could bang her head on that and come right back down. But over top, most likely everybody's excited. She's broke out and you start to get your climb. So I normally get in just over top, but that is the signal that tells you to watch for the breakout to come in a short time. We're not talking about minutes or hours. It could take a couple days. It all depends on how soon that 200 day MA goes flat. If it's about ready to go flat right now, chances are it's going to break out right now. If it takes two days to do it, it'll probably be in about two days. Now let's take a look at what that looks like on our candles. Pretty much the same. We have a little bit of difference here. We've got our first heads bar going from the floor to and through the 200 day MA. Our second candle is completely different. It's red, but you know, none of that matters. All that matters is that the bottom of this candle is not any lower than the bottom of that candle. Everything looks good here. So again, we do have this signal showing up using candles, 
but that is not always the case. Take a look at another one here. This is workhorse, four hour chart, serious downtrend. Look at that. She is just now getting ready to go into the flat zone. She is working it hard. Now here is our, our play, but this is on the one hour chart. You can see that says one hour. I just wanted you to see how close she is to breaking out. That 200 haul and that 200 MA are right there and the price is jumping in between them right now. So I would expect something to be occurring in the next couple of days. Now let's bring this down to the one hour, six month. I do believe I have to go all the way back to get this one. So let's zoom in on this and see exactly what we got going on. A little bit closer because this is real important folks. What we have here is a DIS incorporating a pillar all in the same hot bar play. This has given us a lot of extra power, a lot of extra strength. That first bar, she's on her floor, sitting down here on her 200 haul, and she jumps. She pushes the solid bar up, but not through the 200. We don't want this going through the 200. You can get as close to it as you want, but don't go through it. The wick, we want to see that wick push up to and through the 200. And the higher it goes, the better. Now our second bar is perfect here, right? She did not come down any lower than where this bar started. So that is a perfect DIS, but it is also a pillar. This bar right there, take a good look folks, went through four MAs. She went through the 50, the 20, the nine, and the 200 haul. She even pierced the 200 haul and came down deeper. So we've got a signal that she is going to break out and we've got a signal that she wants to run right now. So we got a lot going on. So she came down, hit this 200, bounced up. I would be looking at this now. I would not get in down here, even though it's tempting, I wouldn't do it. I would wait till she got back up on top of the 50 because the nine, the 20 and the 50 are all resistances until she gets on top of them. Once she got on top, look at how big the bar got. A lot of excitement in the picture. So I'm going to get in just over top of this at about 60 cents and I'm going to ride this up to the 200. Now, in most cases, bouncing off of the 200 haul, she does go to and through the 200 MA, but I'm going to minimize my risk and I'm going to take my gains as I see them. So I'm going to get in at 60 and I'm going to get out just underneath the 200 day MA, which is up there at like 75 cents. So that is about 15 cents gain on a 60 cent entry, which means I'm making 25% on that run. Now, if she goes up and over and looks like she's ready to run, I'll make a second entry up over top of the MA. But I'm really not going to do that until it goes flat. That's when I'm going to jump into it because that's when breakouts happen. Look here. She had a big jump, fell all the way back down to her 200 and bounced to and through the 200. But that 200 is still way too steep. It's falling fast and hard. So this came all the way back down underneath everything, had a double bottom here, bounced off of that double bottom, which is a bullish pattern, and started to rip and climb. She got up on top of the 200 here, and right there it's starting to go flat. This is when she starts taking off, and she is running, running on top of her other MAs floating on it. Now let's take a look at what this looks like over here. We got to come down to the six month, one hour view as well. Focusing in on this as tight as we can get it. So there's our first bar. We are floating on that 200 day haul. She jumps up with the solid bar staying way underneath the 200. The wick shot to and through the 200. Our second bar is a failure. Nothing like this bar we had over here. Over here, we had all sorts of strength and power because we had that pillar that had come into the picture right there. But what do we got here? A solid red bar breaking through all the MAs, the solid bar. That's horrible. I don't like that. And she came all the way down to the 200. This doesn't fit anything. It doesn't fit the DIS. It doesn't fit the pillar. And still, she took off. I couldn't see the signal using 
you know, your candles. I have to use my Heikinashis to see this. And we've got ourselves a beautiful, atypical breakout there, don't we? Our 200 is falling. Our 200 haul is climbing. Our price is in the middle. And she's taking a bounce right there. What's she going to do? Well, she's probably going to start rolling back up as our 200 goes flat. You see it going flat right now, folks? And now she's starting to push away and climb. So those are the sort of things we're looking for. But you can't always see them on the candles, but you can see them on the Heikinashis. Let's take a look at ticker SVM coming back to our four-hour view. Ooh, we got two of them here. Wow. Look at this one. This was a signal as the 200 went flat. And look at that run. She's going from somewhere like 250 up to uh, four bucks. And then we got another one, same exact sort of thing here. The 200 is already climbing. She's breaking out from 337 with this signal. And she takes off the 200 from 361 up to 461. So these are great signals here. Let's zoom in on these on the four hour chart. First one here. And let me back this up and we'll get this one here. All right, let, let me zoom in on that just a little bit more for you. So it's the same exact thing, 200 MA at the top, 200 haul at the bottom. They're closing in on each other. This is your atypical breakout with your price in the middle. She is riding on that 50-day MA. That is her floor. She jumps from her floor to and through the 200 without the solid bar going through the 200. We don't want to see that. Second bar never came down lower than this. It is fantastic. We've got a great signal here. And look, folks, she is laying on this nine-day MA, climbing smooth and easy. And that's what you need to remember. When you're playing your daily charts, you're on your one minute, you're on your five minute, you're looking for your entries and your exits. That's great. That is excellent. But you're getting too much static. Too much noise. You're seeing lots of bounces in there that can scare you, that can shake you up a little bit. Come back here to the four hour, the one hour, the 30 minute. Find a chart where she is sitting on a strong MA like this. The nine isn't strong, but it's strong right now. And she's floating on this. So if I'm on my five minute chart and I see some crazy dip happen and I'm going, oh no, she's falling. I come over here and I see that dip just brought it back to the nine day MA, not through it, not underneath it. So I feel secure that she is still climbing. Even when she breaks through it, she can come right back up. So do not ignore your long charts just because you're concentrating on the short charts. The long charts give you a perspective that you can de definitely cash in on. Looking at this on our candles. Again, we are on the floor. We bounce up. Oh, look at this. See, this one is different as well. This candle broke through. The solid part of the candle went through the MA. So I would not have recognized this as a signal. I would have overlooked this and look at that run afterwards. We're going from $2.39 up to $2.85. And all of the MAs are crossing right now. Bing, 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 bing. Those are all golden crosses helping the price to rise. So again, that's about 50% so far. Half of our signals do show up, though they look different. The other half aren't showing up properly at all. Let's take a look now at DEFLI, ticker D-E-F-L-I, D-F-L-I. And what we've got here is a breakout that you're going to want to watch. This looks like it could happen Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. You see we're in a serious downtrend. We have a D-I-S right here. And our 200 isn't exactly going flat yet, but she's working on it. This is our signal. This tells us to pay attention. We got our 200 haul at the bottom, 200 MA at the top, closing in on each other, a typical breakout with the price in the middle. Man, folks, seven out of 10 times these break out and they are worth paying attention to. So let's zoom in on those bars. Are they just like all the rest? Yep. We were on the floor here, but she dipped. She bounced off of the 200. Now, I got to tell you, folks, when I have a 200 sandwich, 200 MA on the top, 200 haul on the bottom, price in the middle, 
I don't care where the price is. I expect it to fall down to the 200 haul and jump off of that and get a really strong push. So this all set up nicely. She came down, she hit her 200, she came back up, she hit this 200 with her head. Right now she is falling back down, even crouched underneath that 200 haul like a cat does. A cat will crouch down just a couple inches to jump really, really high. That's what that kind of looks like to me. And it looks like we could get a jump here. Once this 200 MA gets a little flatter, I think we should be watching for a breakout. Let's take a look at it over at this end with our candles. Oh, we got a gap there, but it's still working. As you can see, uh, <laughs> mouse is giving me a headache. We jumped off the floor, our 200 haul, two and through the 200 MA. This bar totally different than our second bar, but it's still righteous. We still have the bottom of this bar not being any lower than the bottom of that bar. So it's a solid signal that we could pay attention to. Now, one thing I got to say with this DIS, the DIS does not have to be in an atypical breakout to work. All you need is one 200 MA over it. It can be the standard MA or it can be the hull. Any 200 over top of it and it plays this game where it shoots off of the floor with a wick through the 200 and then back down with the second bar not dropping any lower than the first one, it's a breakout setup. Watch those folks. I find these over and over again. These are the hot charts I share with you during the week. I look for this sort of set up an atypical breakout and then I look for these signals inside the chart. I look for those pillars. I look for my DISs. When I find them, those are the stocks I focus in on. These are the stocks we focus in on at Penny Boys. Every day we find charts that look hot, that look ready to run. We chart them out. We choose our entries, our exits. We get in, we get out, we take gains. We do it again and again, three or four times a day. At the end of the day, you've made yourself a good chunk of money. Now, maybe you lost one, but we get out with controlled losses. You sell with an automatic order so that you only lose as much as you want to lose. So maybe you gained 100, 150, and 90 dollars and you lost 25. You won three, you lost one. As long as you keep winning more than you're losing, you will never go broke, folks. I assure you that. And you don't even have to count your gains until the end of the day. Kind of like the old country song. Don't count your money until the game is over. That's really what's going on here. Think about percentages. Think about wins. Get your plan set up. We got lots of videos over at Penny Boys. I got lots of videos. We want you to make money, folks. So please go through all of this information. Hope I shared something interesting here with you. Something you can put to use to put some cha-ching in your pocket. Not a lot of more due diligence you can do about this subject, but just study it. Watch your charts very carefully and consider, do you want to use Heikinashis or do you want to use candles? Totally up to you. Thanks for your time, folks. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.